Rory gets fired from the Joe Budden podcast. And at this point, the Rory and Ma wave has come to an end. Drop the intro. Welcome back, gang. What's up, man? <laughs> I couldn't. E I can't even welcome you with such energy after hearing the fuckery for the day. So it's so it's 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 really sad. It's really sad. I got something else to report. That's 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 that's. that's it just goes right right along with this. Right right along with with the fuckery for the day. And I don't even want to give you a hint. Matter of fact, I will. Just to make sure y'all watch my next video. Y'all heard that Meek denied Rick Ross entry to the club because he's trying to do business with Rock Nation and he has quote unquote problems with Rick Ross. More fuckery. Like this shit is just getting sadder and sadder. Don't nobody want to, we don't want to see no friends go through a split. Like, that shit was bad enough with Jay-Z, Dame Dash, Beanie Siegel, Oskino, Drake and Wayne don't make music no more. Like, this is just, uh, this is trifling, man. This is, this is, this is really trifling. And it really hurts me to even talk about it. You feel me? But, man, I, I, I basically predicted this in my last video when I was reviewing, uh, return of Rory and Maul. And I was just saying, if a man say that he don't respect you, he don't owe you respect, y'all y'all going to have a lot more problems. Like, y'all just have a, a problematic friendship from there. You feel what I'm saying? And every day, almost every conversation, going to give you that vibe. I just think, like, you can have a certain conversation with somebody, a certain experience with somebody, and now every conversation after that experience is just messed up. Feel me? It's just it's just a bad vibe. You know, a bad spirit can be introduced to a relationship or a friendship. Now, everything you say or do after that, or you listen to from that person you went through it with, is just it's just shot. And that's what I'm seeing with this. Sometimes somebody will reveal their character to you, a, a, a part of their character that you never expected. And now every time they talk, you just see a problem. You see a flaw. When you, when you go through these situations with somebody, the real problem is some people hate solutions. Some people saying, some people hate saying, my fault. I don't, some people don't care if they hurt you. We, we, we friends. We close. If I do something to bother you, whether I'm right or wrong, I apologize for bothering you because I never want to make you uncomfortable just because I got to get my truth or my personality across. I don't want to do that to you. You feel me? Now, I could feel like I'm so right that I don't owe you an apology, but I'm going to apologize just because you my man, you my friend, and I don't want to bother my friend because I'm doing something, even if you bothering me. But I, I, res I expect the same thing from you, right? So when when they when they initially return, Ma is saying this, but he's saying it's my fault for trying to put my design on somebody else. Meaning that this is how I would carry it. And my problem is thinking that you would be good enough to carry it the same as me. Good enough of a person. So the way Ma talking is like, yeah, I know this shit over with, but this is a good situation amongst people that that I love so let me do the best that I can with what we still have but there is something missing from our friendship that was once there that will stop it from being the same but I rock with you so much even though we are not as close as we was because of what we went through I'm still going to be as close as I can be to you and that's real love bro so I respect Ma for that because he could have just chalked the whole situation because you said you don't owe me respect. 
you said that the podcast is none of my business and you said a million other things that we not even putting online that was out of line that I would never say to you. That's basically marks the end of our era and our friendship. You feel what I'm saying? But damn, Joe. Old school mouse. Like all of me featuring Imani. I did it in my heart. But I feel like that's not enough. Trying to give you all of me. I'm saying I don't want to change. Like we riding from Sicklerville back to Philly. I'm 11 years old. I had to wake up 6:30 in the morning to go back to school. My man, my man Jimmy playing that in the car on the highway. I mean, Joe, you really my nigga, bro. Yo, let me let me tell y'all a story, man. Like, I got this video about P. Michael on my page, right? And I, and I fuck with P. Michael. And he said, he had this video. He said, never meet your idols. Never meet somebody that you look up to. Because you don't want to, when you meet somebody that you look up to and you respect, it usually always messes up how you look at them. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you meet somebody you idolize, and they just do things to bother you and make you uncomfortable. And now you can't even have a role model no more. And I never will forget when he said that. And it's for situations like this. I would never want to meet Joe Budden because I love him to death. And I know that he might not be able to handle the, the love that I got for him. That's why when you're a fan of somebody, you walk, the, you walk up to him sometimes like, oh, my God, bro. Ooh. They just looking down on you like this fucking peasant. This nigga's not on my level. And he has the nerve to have good energy for me. I'm not in a fucking mood. <laughs> like, it's like, so, you know, when I see celebrities that I look up to now, I might. I messed up when I met Beanie Siegel a little bit. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I just expected. I just expected m more from him. But people got that 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 thing where it's just like, if you look up to me, I'm going to have to look down on you. You feel what I'm saying? But that's a sidebar. Never meet your idols, man. You wanna? You my role model. I rock with you from the relationship that we have from a distance. I'm not going to add nothing. If it's broke, don't fix it. I already love you, bro. So I'm not about to meet you and hate you. <laughs> like, I'm just love you. Then I don't give a fuck. I'll close you. I don't give a fuck. You're around the corner. <laughs> like, I am not about to one on one this young and, 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 and mess up how, how I, how I view you or how I feel about you. And, um, basically to get back to, uh, Rory and Mardo, man, I wish y'all the best. I really hope that y'all can boss up. When you see the, when you see people like, have their own lanes and, and build their own they own wave. It's usually corny as shit, man. It happened with my man Dev from uh Gilly and um Wallow Podcast. That was my man. Like this is the first person I seen that was like an unknown character. And when he came on he fit right in and he was like just like goaded. You feel me? Like he he like he just came he just came on a on a podcast and it you know how you look down on the third person? You feel what I'm saying? Like, you got Ebro, you got Rosenberg, then you got Laura Styles. Like, you might look down on Laura Styles because Ebro and Rosenberg is up here. You got um, DJ Envy, Charlamagne, then you got Angela Yee. You're not about to really look at Angela Yee. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's like certain levels of energy and you may you may think one energy is lower than the other. This nigga Dev, when he was uh, working with Wallow and Gilly, his energy was right up there with Wallow and Gilly. Like, right up there, bro. It wasn't lower at all. It was to the point when Gilly and Wallow had problems with him. I stopped watching the show for him, and I'm like, no, y'all not going to do my man like that. I'm not rocking with y'all. That's not right. You feel me? But Gilly and Wallow, they, they so good at what they do. Like, a couple months later, I, I, I got back on. You feel me? Because I fuck with them, too. And here's the thing. When Dev went to go do his own thing after getting kicked off the show, or I'm not going to say kicked off because I can't remember and I don't want to make him look bad. But after he left the show and he tried to do his own thing, his show wasn't in demand like that. He wasn't in demand for just being by himself. Like Gillian Wallow was kind of, even though they was like on the same level when the show came on, that support that he got from them made the show watchable. Now, when Dad went to go do his own thing, like I, I don't, I'm not really rocking with the team that he that he picked because you got to pick like, alphas you gotta pick like strong energies you people cannot be weird or you feel me they like you know what i'm saying like they gotta they gotta be super thorough they gotta be super sturdy 
You feel me? When you as or as at least as sturdy as the as the previous team that you had. So I say that because worry them all. Like I love the way y'all carry the podcast all the way. But if y'all go do your own thing, I'm not sure if it's gonna be the same. But like as as when you know y'all had Joe to make it so watchable. But at the end of the day, like I rock with Rory and Maul so much, I watch it. You know, I just at least watch it for as long as I can. But at the end of the day, Rory, you should not let that man fire you. Like as we get older, we ha we have to understand that no matter how much we love somebody and we rock with them, we gotta know when to let them go, or they gonna try to bite us. You feel me? You bite me one. The dog bite me one time. I gotta make sure I don't put them in a position to bite me again. You feel me? I have to. And you put you let you let that happen. When y'all was on that episode, y'all gave Joe more opportunities to make you look bad. You feel me? Now throughout the entire show, he just saying shit to make you look like a bitch. You feel me? To make you look like you just not you don't got no fucking nuts. You feel me? And now you got hundreds of thousands of people watching you get disrespected and get treated like you don't got no dick, bro. You feel me? Like that's the problem, you know, and, 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 and with that alone, it should have been like, I'm not about to, like, I'm not about to, I'm not about to do this, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's bad enough if you do it and it's, and it's no camera recording when you, I like, I don't, I don't rock with nobody. You'll never see me with nobody but my girl and the kids, like for real. I'm not around nobody in the first place because I don't really give people opportunities to play with me. You feel what I'm saying? Now, what I learned now that I'm older is on the internet, you got to let people play with you. You have to let people disrespect you. You have to, or you won't survive on the internet. You won't like the internet. You got somebody get in the comments like, yeah, you, you this, you that. Like, ah, you got to let it rock. You can't let that, you can't let it get to you. You got to let it be acceptable. You feel what I'm saying? And that's hard when you like maybe sensitive or you like, yo, it like things can really bother you or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's what people do. You know, people see somebody and they talk shit. And they wanted to, they want everybody to see him talk shit about you. That's that's what happens. So you got to be able to live with it. But you got the camera on and you got f fucking 500 to a million, 500,000 to a million people about to react to how you treat me. <laughs> if, if you don't fuck with me, you better be fake, nigga. You know how you don't fuck with your mom, but you say, I love you, mom. You need anything. You don't, you don't fuck with your dad. You still go check on him and make sure he got everything he need and you got to put on that fake per persona just to show you. If you don't do that shit, fuck you. Shit, if you can't give me real love, that shit better be some good ass fake love on camera. Or the or the disrespect is just at an all time high. I don't give a fuck how I feel about somebody. I'm not about to get on the camera and tell you how I feel about them. Because that means the disrespect is at an all time high. You bring them up in this job. Oh, no, nah, that's my man. In my head, I could be like, man, you like this nigga then. Did this, he did that, he did this, he tried to fuck my bitch, he tried to take my braid, he tried to woo wham. That's none of your fucking business. I'm older now though. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not saying like that's the way that that I am saying that's the way that you should think, but that's not the way I expect you to think until you get my age. Like once you start to like get around 30 and all that, it's a new ideas coming, old energies that you used to defend that wasn't right, they leave. And that's what happened to me. So like if, if you knew me before, I used to talk about everybody business, all my business, all they business, all that. You know, I just turned 26. I feel like I just turned 35. It's none of your business what me and my nigga went through, what me and my girl went through, what me and my family went through, how I feel about my mom. It's none of your fucking business, bro. You feel me? I love my mom. I love all my friends. Nobody did nothing wrong. Let's talk about some other shit. Real shit. So, like, I feel the same way. Like, we friends, nigga. Don't get on this bitch talking about talking to me in a way as if you want me to smack the shit out you that's what it happened originally like when rory and joe originally had the problems it was like joe you keep talking in a way like i won't smack i, I really want to smack the shit out you all right rory take a break you feel me then i come back and you saying things that's making me want to smack the shit out you but i'm trying to correct my energy so we don't go back to where we came from because i i like our friendship i like our business and I like the opportunities that we created to incline. So I'm not about to act the way that I was acting before to bring some toxicity, if that's even a fucking word, back into the situation. Joe like, man, fuck all that. I don't give a fuck, nigga. Like, fuck? A, this Joe faced the whole podcast like, <laughs> what do you want me to do, nigga? Fuck you, nigga. Like, I don't give a fuck if I invited you back. I don't give a fuck if we solve things behind the scenes. 
I'm making a problem right here. Oh my God, Joe, so toxic, bro. You know, I got toxic friends that I love and you know what I do with them? I barely talk to them, I barely see them. So I'm on Invest. And today we're investing in good friendships and good energies and we're selling. We going we going to sell them stocks that we got in the bad energies that we love. You know, everybody got a bad energy from somebody and we love that person. And we ignore it and we sweep it under the rug. Lift that rug up, nigga. And focus on what's under there. I don't give a fuck how much what's swept under the rug is bothering you. How much you don't want to see it because if you don't pay attention to it, everything will be good. That's how it is. That's how black people rock. If I don't pay attention to my problems, I'll be good. If I just keep ignoring everything that's right in front of me, I'm straight. <laughs> we, nah, we getting old, bro. <laughs> like, it is what it is. Like, chalk that shit, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how y'all feel about the whole situation. You fired my fucking man. And that was really your man. Listen, you like, you know how you felt about him already. You shouldn't even let him back. You shouldn't even let him back. You just have been how you felt. Like you, you, why would you bring somebody back to the business so you could treat them like a bitch? If you, if you let somebody cross that line with you, they'll never be your friend. So when my friends like respect is at a hundred percent, I never let that shit hit 99. Every time you say a little something, do a little something, I'm on your fucking ass. You feel me? And you're going to correct that shit immediately. You're going to keep losing that friendly bond because you're not demanding that respect every second. That shit is in demand. With Ish and Ice, I don't really see them treating them like they Rory and Maul because they got more alpha energy. They got more, like, don't play with me. You feel me? I done seen niggas play with niggas, but when they try to play with me, I did that shit. Now they talk to me in a different way than they talk to them other niggas. And we friends because I'm demanding that shit every second. I'm not letting nothing slide. If you know me, I'm on your ass. You know I'm on your ass. That's why you don't want to talk to me. Because I don't, I don't, a lot of people don't like talking to me. A lot of people got to hide how they really feel about me because I'm going to be on your ass. Like, I don't give a fuck who you is. I don't give a fuck how big you is, how important you is, how how close we is, how far you is, you know, how much of a threat you is, how scary you is. I'm on your fucking ass. <laughs> and it is a win or, win or lose any situation. I'm on your fucking ass. Like, well, or I'm going to just avoid you and just not say shit to you. So, Y'all know what it is. Like I said, I'm on invest, man. Matter of fact, I might throw a, I might throw a subscribe button in here. That shit might, <sighs> might crash land on the screen. I might throw a little like button. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe, man. It's your boy. I'm gone.